everyone, I'm Rod Wortham and welcome to this episode of Race Face Driver Updates. We had 11 drivers in action over the weekend, so let's get started. Anthony Alfredo was at Circuit of the Americas for the NASCAR Cup Series debut. Anthony had to start at the tail end of the field due to a power steering leak that had to be changed before the race. Let's check in with Anthony for a post-race recap. Wet and wild day at Circuit of the Americas today. First off, incredible facility, super cool experience to race there. But it was pouring rain, those restarts were insane. It was impossible to see anything, uh, you know, unpredictable at times, but a lot of fun. Uh, getting better at road racing, ended up 18th. Uh, pretty happy with that, especially for never racing in the rain before. So we'll build on it, got a lot of valuable experience. I kind of wish we could have finished the race, ended up 14 laps short, I believe. Uh, just because I think we could have got a couple more spots, maybe a top 15, but a lot of fun, learned a lot, kept it on the track, and had a solid, clean day. I think that's the most you could ask for today. So thanks to everyone at Front Row Motorsports, everyone who supports us. Hope everyone enjoyed the race. Looking forward to coming back here someday. Up next for Anthony, Charlotte Motor Speedway and the Coca-Cola 600 on May 30th. Sheldon Creed qualified third and brought home a fifth place finish at Circuit of the Americas in the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series. Sheldon led a race best 14 laps of the 41 laps around the 3.41 mile 20 turn road course. Sheldon currently sets third in points and has locked into the playoffs with his win at Darlington. Up next for Sheldon, Camping World Truck Series at Charlotte Motor Speedway on May 28th, live on FS1 at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Jesse Love was at Toledo Speedway for the Arkham Menard Series Hers Potato Chip 200. Jesse qualified third in his number 15 Venturini Motorsports Toyota and ran in the top five all day. He was battling for second when an exhaust component broke that affected their horsepower, but Jesse rallied back for a fourth place finish. Up next for Jesse, Arkham Menard Series West at Sonoma Raceway on June 5th. Caden Honeycutt was at Caraway Speedway for the Cars Tour Lightning Saunders Memorial 125. Caden qualified fourth, ran in the top three for the entire race, led 44 laps, and had a 1.5 second lead with three to go before a caution came out, forcing a green-white checker restart. On the restart, Caden got hit from behind, lifting the back tires off the track, hampering his progress, resulting in a third place finish. Up next for Caden, Cars Tour at Langley Speedway on June 5th. Joe Valento was also at Caraway Speedway for the Cars Tour David Saunders Lightning 265. Joe qualified 10th and drove his number 17 DGR Friends of Jacqueline Ford Mustang to another top 10 finish. Let's check in with Joe for a post-race recap. Hey guys, Joe Valento. Just got back from Caraway Speedway this past weekend with the Cars Tour. Uh, qualified P10 and finished P10. Struggled a little bit with handling during the race. Tried to fix it a couple times on the cautions, but just couldn't find what we were looking for. Uh, we'll take what we learned and move on to the next one at Langley. I'm excited to go back there if we ran a couple weeks back and uh, apply what we learned there for the Cars Tour race. Can't thank all the guys though at DGR for all the hard work this weekend. And of course Ford Performance, Nitro Lubricants, Napa Auto Parts, the Friends of Jacqueline Foundation, and Race Face Brand Development. Up next for Joe, Cars Tour at Langley Speedway, June 5th. Bryce Bizanson was at South Sound Speedway in his number seven Jefferson Racing Friends of Jacqueline Ford. Bryce finished second in his heat race, then led 70 plus laps in the 100 lap feature, but got sent to the back because of some questionable contact with another car with only four to go. Bryce battled back to a fifth place finish. Up next for Bryce, back to South Sound Speedway for a Northwest Super Late Model Series event on June 5th. Jake Bowman returned to the SRL Pro Late Model Series at All-American Speedway for a 75-lap main event. Jake qualified fourth, 
started third with the invert and was leading the race before getting into an accident. Jake raced his way back to an eighth place finish. Up next for Jake, SRL Pro Late Models at Irwindale Speedway on June 12th. Gavin Graham returned to his home track of Auburndale Speedway in Winter Haven, Florida. Gavin put his Kurt Britt Motorsports double zero on the pole, but had to start third with the invert. Gavin was racing for the lead on lap 17, but made contact with the leader and got sent to the rear of the field, then raced his way back to a third place finish. Up next for Gavin, Pro Trucks at Chris Motorsports Park in Cordell, Georgia, on May 29th. Brody Moore was at Madera Speedway for round four of the 5150 Junior Late Model Series. Brody qualified 12th and ran as high as 7th before getting spun out but battled his way back to a 12th place finish. Let's check in with Brody for his take on the weekend. Hey everyone, here's an update on how race number four of the 5150 Junior Late Model Series at Madeira Speedway happened. Uh, we went into the weekend third in points and we the top three was only separated by eight points, but instead of battling for the win, we were battling carburetor and ignition problems all weekend. Uh, we qualified 12th position, which was a direct result of us being down on power. Uh, during the race, we ran as high as seventh place and the car was handling really well. Um, until we got spun out and put into the wall, but we were able to recover from that and we finished right where we started in close place. But really hurt us in the points, but I'm confident in Wilson Motorsports that they'll get the car uh, ready for June 26 of the 5150 June Late Model Series. I'd like to thank all of my advertising partners, California Apartment Association, Value Insurance Plan, Assurance Risk Managers, MGF Trucking by My Go Flight. They supply all of my luggage and our GoPro and car camera mounts. Spring Hill Suites by Marriott at Madeira, Race Face Brand Development, and Friends of Jacqueline. So huge thanks to them. Up next for Brody, super late models at Colorado National Speedway on June 12th. Carter Whalen wrapped up his first USAC quarter midget national event in New Mexico by qualifying all three cars into the A main. Carter finished third in heavy Honda, 10th in heavy world formula, and fifth in heavy 160. Great job, young man. Up next for Carter, round four of the Dixie Shootout Series in Nashville, Tennessee on May 29th. Landon Cox had a successful outing in his first USAC national event at Roadrunner QMA in New Mexico over the weekend. Landon won his blue rookie heat race, which put him starting on the pole for the A main, but his car got tight and he finished in fourth. Up next for Landon, Dixie Shootout, Nashville, Tennessee. Other drivers seeing action this weekend include Connor Mozak, who will be at Lime Rock Park for the Trans Am Memorial Classic in his TA2 Camaro on May 28th through the 31st. Cassidy Hines will return to her pro truck at Colorado National Speedway on May 30th. We at Raceface would like to wish everyone a safe Memorial Day weekend as we remember those servicemen and women as well as first responders for the sacrifices they made for our freedom. Well, that's it for this week's Race Face Driver Updates. And remember, if you've missed any of our shows, you can get caught up at raceface.tv on demand. Don't forget to follow us on social media. Make sure to check out Speed Zone Race Store for the latest in apparel. As always, we encourage you to support local racing in your community. This is the biggest race weekend of the year, so enjoy it. We'll be back next week with more from your favorite race face drivers. So go out there, have a great race week. I'm Rod Wortham. Thanks for watching.